Okay, so we're going to have a little chat about catalysts. We're going to discuss what they actually do in the exhaust, whether they are robbing you of power, as is often the conception from a lot of people, and what the choices are that you have if you want a performance alternative to your catalyst. So the catalyst, a lot of people think of as a filter, but it's not. It's a honeycomb that the gases pass through. And because of the structure of this honeycomb and the temperatures, it accelerates a reaction between the gases flowing through it and reduces the harmful emissions. <laughs> So in an ideal world, an engine would burn all of the fuel very, very efficiently and there would be no harmful deposits coming out of the engine into the environment. But the catalyst goes a long way to helping that to happen. So the surface of the catalyst effectively accelerates a transition and allows other molecules to bond to the molecules in the exhaust gases and it converts them from harmful substances into harmless ones. So what does a catalyst typically contain? Well inside the catalyst you've generally got this honeycomb structure that the gases flow through. So is that restricting your exhaust flow? Well if that honeycomb structure was exactly the same size as the exhaust pipe or only slightly larger, yes it certainly would. But what manufacturers have done is increased the size of the catalyst. So although there is a honeycomb going on inside it, it's substantially wider than the conventional exhaust pipe. So the flow rates are not very, very restricted as they go through it. So taking the cat out of the car, or replacing the cat with the sports cat will generally see about three to five percent more power and typically that will affect the spool up on the turbo engine so it will allow the turbo to spool up a little bit more effectively. Some of the early cats were particularly bad and particularly restrictive so you would see larger gains if you took those out and replaced them but in the modern engine with the setups and designs that manufacturers have put into the catalysts you don't generally see very much of a restriction. Even when you've done a little bit of tuning and you've raised the power slightly, you still won't see a dramatic restriction in the exhaust through the catalyst. So the catalyst structure contains precious metals. So it would typically contain palladium, platinum, and rhodium. They're coated onto a ceramic mesh in the form of a lattice. And the size of those cells within the catalyst will have a bearing on its efficiency, how much of those gases get converted into harmless substances, and also on the restriction in your flow. So a lot of performance aftermarket catalysts tend to be slightly larger in size and the cells are larger as well. So they facilitate the airflow much more effectively and efficiently than a, a more restrictive, smaller cell version of the catalyst. So nitrogen oxides, hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide are all the lethal substances that come out of a combustion engine. So they're all things that are addressed by the catalyst and they're converted into nitrogen gas, water vapor, and carbon dioxide, all components that would naturally occur in the atmosphere and that are not particularly toxic to humans. So they do a substantially good job in reducing those harmful emissions from your car engine. So Catalyst first came into operation in the UK around about 1993. In the United States, around about the 1970s, you had the Clean Air Act, where manufacturers started looking to catalysts and installing catalysts in their cars. So they've been with us for quite a while. And over that period of time, the technology and design that's gone into the catalyst has substantially improved. So we've got very, very efficient catalysts now. And they're standard in most gasoline and diesel powered cars. So here we've got a standard catalyst cross section so you can see the lattice is fairly fairly small and when you look at a performance version of this exact same size catalyst you can see that those cells are much larger so the flow rate is much better so if you further increase the size of the catalyst itself you would also generally improve the airflow through the exhaust and through the catalyst it is possible though to go too large because large pipes tend to flow slower than small pipes so you very much got to think about the velocity of those gases as they come out of the engine. The catalyst can operate at temperatures up to a thousand centigrade. The exact 
catalyst construction itself has a bearing on its tolerance for heat. But if unburnt fuel is going into the catalyst, that is generally very, very harmful. So first of all, that will coat the inside mesh and just prevent the chemical reactions from taking place and from the exhaust gases converting into those harmless components, just because what they're meant to be reacting with is protected from them with that layer of fuel. But the fuel itself will also burn and heat up the catalyst dramatically. So the catalyst will eventually start to glow. And as that catalyst starts to glow, it will start to melt, the structure will start to degrade, and that can actually lead to blockages or affect the way the catalyst works in the future and dramatically reduce its efficiency. So you really want to avoid an engine that is running rich, chucking too much fuel out through the catalyst because that's gonna store up a whole host of problems for you in the long run. So the usual operating temperature of a catalyst is about 150 to 600 degrees centigrade, but that can be almost double in the case of an engine that is misfiring or it's chucking unburnt fuel into the catalyst. And it's those areas where you start to have serious problems. So unburnt fuel causes an exothermic reaction within the catalyst. It can melt or damage the catalyst and just generally reduces its effectiveness. So it's important if your car has a catalyst to make sure it is running efficiently, that it's not over dumping fuel. So you need to just check that the sensors and the engine are giving the correct readings. Otherwise the ECU is going to supply too much fuel or not enough air. And you're going to have that condition where the engine is starting to run rich and that will degrade the lifespan of your car. So with diesel engines, they work in a very, very similar way to they would on a gasoline engine. They're generally called a diesel oxidization catalyst. It reduces carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons and particulate matter. And diesels often have a particulate filter which collects all of those particles and then burns them off into much, much smaller insignificant soot particles. And we've seen SCR selective catalyst reduction systems in some diesel engines. But in the diesel engine, it, it still is going to be converting those exhaust gases by allowing them to react with the temperature and the surface structure of the catalyst, the precious metals that go into that surface structure, and basically convert those harmful emissions into completely benign, non-toxic ones. So because they contain precious metals, catalysts are very, very expensive. And this in a lot of areas has created a market for people stealing catalysts and selling them for their precious metal scrap values. And I heard a statistic as well. I don't know how true this is. So if you know, please um, drop a comment. But they say that on the road surface, if you dredge up the road surface and put it through a refining process, you'll extract more precious metals per tonne than you would get out of many quarries and many mines. And that's just due to the way the catalysts work and the emissions of the car that build up over long stretches of very, very busy highways. So I hope this has been interesting to you. It's another component within the exhaust system that people don't really understand. It's often the big bad boy of your exhaust system and it's blamed for a lot of problems, but most catalysts are actually fairly well designed, so they're not that big a problem, but there are performance alternatives. You need to check the legality in your area of replacing catalysts. So in most areas, it's illegal to remove the catalyst completely. And in some areas, you can't even swap the catalyst if your current catalyst is working. You're only allowed to replace it when it actually needs replacing. So it can be a bit of a minefield. And if you've got a turbocharged engine, you will generally see a faster spool up on your turbo and a little bit more top end power. But don't expect a decat or a sports cat to make a substantial difference to your power. If you've tuned the engine heavily and you're making a lot more power, you may well be seeing restriction. And at that point, it's worth looking at the whole exhaust system, not just the catalyst, but particularly the headers and the cat area, and just make sure that that is flowing as well as it possibly can. So thanks for watching. Please boot that like button. It really helps us to get out there. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.